There comes a point in every person's life when they must confront the silent truth that echoes through their days. Learning how to say no, not just a polite, quiet refusal when it's convenient or comfortable, but a firm, resolute boundary that protects what truly matters. Your peace, your well-being, and your sense of self. Learning to say no is not simply about turning people down or avoiding obligations. It is about reclaiming the space to breathe, to exist authentically, and to protect your mental health in a world that often demands more than you can give. Saying no is often associated with negativity. We hesitate to refuse requests because we fear disappointing others, burning bridges, or being perceived as selfish. This hesitation to decline can stem from deep-rooted insecurities or learned behaviours from childhood, patterns where we were taught that we must always be agreeable, accommodating and available. But what if we could shift the narrative? What if saying no could be reframed not as an act of selfishness, but as a profound and necessary step towards self-care? The ability to set boundaries, after all, is not about creating distance between you and others but about creating a healthier balance between your needs and the needs of the world around you. The truth is, when you don't protect your mental space, when you constantly say yes to everything and everyone, you are at risk of depleting your emotional reserves. Have you ever felt stretched too thin, exhausted by commitments you never really wanted to make in the first place? Have you found yourself giving and giving, only to realize that you have little left for yourself? These moments are not signs of weakness. They are signals from your inner world, urging you to reclaim your energy. They are reminders that your well-being is not a luxury, but a necessity. Saying no is not easy, especially for those of us who have spent a lifetime believing that our worth is tied to our ability to be of service to others. If you've ever struggled with self-esteem or have been through trauma where boundaries were ignored or violated, the very idea of setting limits can feel daunting, maybe even terrifying. You might ask yourself, will people still care about me if I say no? Will I be alone if I don't comply with what's being asked of me? These are normal fears, and they stem from a deep human need for connection and belonging. But here's the thing. Real, healthy relationships don't fall apart because you set boundaries. In fact, they thrive because of them. Boundaries create a framework for mutual respect, for honouring each other's limits, and for fostering deeper, more authentic connections. When you continuously say yes out of fear of rejection or a desire to be liked, you might notice that you begin to lose touch with who you are. You become a reflection of what others need from you, rather than a clear representation of what you need from life. There's a slow erosion of your identity, and eventually, resentment and burnout begins to creep in. This is why setting boundaries is a radical act of self-preservation. It's not just about protecting your time or your physical energy. It's about protecting your emotional and mental capacity. It's about protecting your sense of self. So how do you start? How do you begin to say no without feeling guilty, ashamed or fearful of the consequences? First, it's important to understand that saying no is a practice, you won't master it overnight. Like any other skill, it requires time, patience, and a willingness to be uncomfortable as you navigate new territory. Start by tuning into your body and your emotions. Often, we get a physical or emotional signal when something isn't right. When someone asks something of us that we don't truly want to give, our body responds. Maybe it's a tightness in your chest, a knot in your stomach, or a quiet sense of dread. These are your internal cues and they are there to guide you. Trust those feelings. Trust that when your body reacts with discomfort, it's telling you something important. Pay attention to the situations or people that consistently evoke these reactions. These are the moments when you most need to consider saying no. When you've identified those moments, Remind yourself that your worth is not dependent on being everything for everyone. In fact, people who truly care about you will understand your need for boundaries. And those who don't? Well, maybe they're not as invested in your well-being as you might have hoped. This can be painful to realize, but it is also liberating. 
It allows you to filter out the relationships that drain you and invest in the ones that support your growth. It's important to start small. If the idea of saying no outright feels overwhelming, begin with smaller, more manageable situations. Perhaps you can decline an invitation to an event that you're not excited about, or say no to an extra task at work that would stretch you beyond your limits. Each time you set a boundary, acknowledge the discomfort, but also recognize the relief that follows. Over time, this will build your confidence. You will begin to realize that setting boundaries doesn't lead to catastrophe. In fact, it often leads to greater respect from those around you and more peace within yourself. One powerful way to protect your mental health when setting boundaries is to communicate clearly and with compassion. Saying no doesn't have to be harsh or confrontational. You can express your needs in a way that is respectful to both yourself and others. For example, if someone asks you to do something and you're not able to, you can say something like, I understand you need some help, but I'm a bit busy currently and not able to take that on right now. Or, I would love to help, but I'm trying to stay focused on my current priorities at the moment. These kinds of responses are firm but kind, and they allow you to protect your space without feeling like you are shutting people out. Boundaries aren't just about learning to say no, they are about defining what is acceptable to you in every aspect of your life, from how people speak to you, to how they treat you, to the kind of energy you allow into your environment. Have you ever found yourself in a conversation where someone is venting negativity and you leave feeling drained? That's an opportunity to set a boundary, not by cutting them off from your life, but by protecting your energy. You can offer support without allowing yourself to be pulled into a spiral of negativity. For example, you might say, I understand you're going through something difficult and I want to help, but I need to protect my own energy right now. Can we talk about solutions instead? This approach extends to every area of your life. If you're overcommitted at work, overwhelmed by social obligations, or simply exhausted from the endless stream of demands, it's time to reassess where your boundaries have slipped. Ask yourself, where do I feel most drained? Which obligations feel the most burdensome? How can I start to reclaim my energy by saying no to what no longer serves me? Protecting your mental health requires consistent, thoughtful attention to your needs. It requires listening to your inner voice, the one that has likely been silenced by the noise of external expectations. But that voice, the one that tells you when something isn't right, is wise. It knows what you need, even if you've been ignoring it for a long time. The more you listen to that voice, the stronger it becomes, and the easier it will be to honor your boundaries. Ultimately, saying no is an act of self-love. It's a declaration that your well-being matters. It's a recognition that you cannot pour from an empty cup and that to give your best to the world, you must first take care of yourself. This doesn't mean you'll never be there for others. In fact, when you protect your mental health, you'll find that you have more energy, more clarity, and more emotional capacity to show up in meaningful ways for the people you care about. Setting boundaries allows you to engage with the world from a place of wholeness rather than depletion. As you begin this journey, remind yourself that it's okay to stumble. It's okay to feel guilty or uncertain. These feelings will pass as you continue to practice. What matters is that you are taking steps to protect yourself, to reclaim your time, and to honor your needs. Each time you say no to something that drains you, you are saying yes to something that nourishes you. In the end, this practice of saying no will bring you closer to a life that feels authentic and aligned with who you truly are. It will open up space for the things that truly matter, the passions, the relationships, and the experiences that bring you joy. So when the time comes and you feel that inner resistance, don't be afraid to say no. You are not closing a door. You are opening up space for your own well-being. And that is something worth protecting.